Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, Gamma Di Gamma. Now, this video finally, I'm going to be presenting, not uh, any of my friends, and uh, I'm sorry for not being active, not not you know, myself making videos. But I, I'm I'm here now, and hopefully, I, I I can't promise my regularity on this channel, but I will myself make most of my videos henceforth because you know again i felt that we started off with a, a series on complex functions and didn't quite go anywhere with that just made one video then like disappear so so in this video i would like to derive the the form of koshi gusa theorem and in a way sort of prove it so let's get started. Please watch the previous video on complex functions if you haven't already. Okay, so uh, the topic of today's discussion is uh, Cauchy Gusa theorem, which is extremely important in complex analysis. So for that, uh, let's start with this. Uh, let uh, w of z be a complex function that is a uh, holomorphic. So if you don't know what holomorphic means, please check out my uh, video on Cauchy-Riemann equations. And analytic in a region A. We just care about a region for now. We don't care about a global holo holomorphism or you know, an, an analyticity. We just, we just care about the region A for now. Now, what analytic means is that the function W of Z, it's not gonna like blow up to infinity at, at you know? So assume you have one over Z minus Z naught and assume Z0 is in A. If this was your W of Z, then whatever your A was, Z0 is in A, so there is at least one point where this function W of Z is gonna blow up to infinity. So it's not analytic. In this case, if, if W of Z has this form. so. We do not want functions like like this. We want nice functions that have finite value for all z belonging to A. That's what being analytic crudely means. Fine, this was just the you know the the way to go. Now what we're going to do is we're going to define a contour C which is naturally located in the region A. So yeah, contour C inside the region A. Otherwise, you know, having, having this definition doesn't make any sense. Let's calculate the, the contour integral over C, uh, the function W of Z dz now i would like to remind you that w of z can be expressed as a a real function of x and y plus i times some other real function so the complex function w can be split up like a complex number into two real functions of x and y where you know one of them has an i multiplied with it and moreover it's important to know that z is equal to x plus i y therefore having u and v themselves as functions real functions over x and y makes sense in this case so now if you plug in instead of w u and v you know this definition you're going to end up with a contour integral over c u of x y 
plus i times v of x y multiplied with now d z is d x plus i d y just the the total differential there now i can split this up and multiply stuff and group stuff together into the real part so real part is u of x y dx minus v of x y dy plus i times contour integral over c v of x y plus u of x y i forgot a dx here and a dy here okay now now i'm, I'm going to call this first integral this this first guy here i'm going to call it i1 and this guy here i2 now here's a really clever observation if you look at i1 just i1 you have like these dx and dy terms and it looks like some sort of linear combination going on so whenever that stuff like this is ha happens and if you have a firm understanding of linear algebra you can express this as the vector u of x y as one component negative v of x y as the second component but this dotted with the positional vector dx comma dy i mean you you can check with a dot product if you want to use engineering notation you can have i hat j hat and i hat j hat for these uh, dx dy and the, the dot product is going to give you this term for i1 okay well what what does this look like well it it, it certainly seems like a, a line integral because that's what a you know contour integral is it's a line integral so it's somewhat like some ve vector field f dotted with the, the directional element dr but we know we can use stokes theorem and i'm assuming you know uh multivariable calc at least the basics of it to integrate over the area in enclosed within this contour I, i'm calling it a of the curl the vector field f dotted with the the area vector which has the direction of the the normal vector so in this case i think if you use the right hand rule it's like pointing out of the page so that's that that that's that's stokes theorem it's a theorem stokes law is for you know when you have basic fluid mechanics going on Stokes theorem. Now, let's apply this to I one. Let, let's just call this guy F one because there's you know I one and I two. So, and let's just find the, the the curl first. So, fine. Let's find the curl of F one. If you do that, it's it's not that hard to calculate. It's just. Uh, partial with respect to y of u of x y plus no minus and minus plus partial with respect to x of v of x y fair fair enough that, that was that, that wasn't that bad right okay let, let's we we have i1 let's move on to i2 so if you're doing that for i2 we can do a similar approach so for i2 we have forget the i we can express everything as v of x y um, comma u of x y dotted with uh, again the directional vector components fine and then you know call this f2 find the curl because we need to use 
Stokes theorem on this guy. So the curl of this guy is simply partial with respect to y v of x y minus partial with respect to x of u of x y. Okay, fair enough. Now, now we know we know the curls. Let's club all of this contour integral in general into a big expression. Okay, so we started with the contour integral over c of w of z dz. That this now now bec it becomes by using a Stokes theorem the integral over the area enclosed a of well the, the curl of the first term which is partial with respect to y of u of x y plus partial with respect to x of v of x y. Um, and then d d sigma which is your area element becomes dx dy fine and then this was i1 now for i2 we have i times integral over the same enclosed area a but with a different curl term partial with respect to y of v of x y minus partial with respect to x of u of x y dx dy now a brilliant observation here is 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 using this property the, the property that that w of z is holomorphic and that's important because we know holomorphic functions satisfy the cauchy riemann equations all of this was covered in in the previous video so please check that out so cauchy riemann equation which are Partial with respect to x of u of x y. Partial with respect to y of v of x y. And the second equation is partial with respect to y of u of x y is equal to negative partial with respect to x of v of x y. And since we're given that the w is ho holomorphic, we can just implement this because notice. If you su substitute this, the second equation in in the in the first integral i1, you're gonna get negative partial with respect to x of v of x y plus the same term, which just dies down to zero, irrespective of what area you're on, because the curl is just zero now. And similarly, if you plug in the first equation for i2, you notice that the you you'll have partial with respect to x of u of x y subtracted from itself. So again irrespective of the area that will go to zero which means that the entire contour integral over c of w of z dz is just zero given all these conditions that you know w of z is analytic in the region where you're defining the contour and it's holomorphic so that was basically cauchy gursa theorem and in the next video we're going to do a a more general case of this because like analyticity of w of z won't be given there there will be like one point where w of z is blowing up we call those points poles so we're gonna have to like like maneuver ourselves around them you know sort of be treat them delicately do sort of surgery around them and, you know we're gonna do way more interesting stuff after that so I hope you enjoyed this video guys and this was it's pretty simple multivariable calc. I'll probably make a video in the future proving Stokes theorem. Not, not like super generally over manifolds and stuff but like for all relevant purposes. So stay tuned. I know I've been uh, pretty in inactive but I, I promise to do better in the future. Please uh, subscribe to my channel. I'm like just like 50 or 60 away from half my goal which is 500 my ultimate goal is like 1000 i'm like 40 or, or 60 away from like getting 500 subscribers so please urge all the people you know to subscribe it will be helpful for me thank you